Hello, my front porch friend. Well, it's one of those windy winter days today. And Palmer and I are out here at this old log cabin across the pasture from my house. We've been out here before, it's just been a long time. This thing is still in the process of renovation. Yeah, I've been working on it for quite a while. Just gotta, I gotta get some more funds before I can start back up again. Oh, someday though, I have a dream of bringing you out here when it's all finished and you can see it the way I see it. Anyway, it's an old, old cabin. It was the only thing on the property when my grandfather bought this place in 1935. And so they say it was built, I've had people look at it, and they said it was built around the mid to late 1800s. Can you believe that? So many, many stories that I look forward to telling you about someday. Oh, I gotta show you something and take you back over here. Now, in the meantime, if you'll excuse this little Band-Aid on my nose here, I had a little place removed this past few days, and so I'm stuck with this Band-Aid until it heals. So if it doesn't bother you, it certainly won't bother me. Look what I found for you. We have a little tradition, don't we? Now, Palmer, don't you eat it. Every year, I like to share with you my first buttercup. Oh, this was the one I saw today. I just had to snatch it when I saw it and bring it to you. Now, I know it's not, these are not really buttercups. They're called something else. Daffodils, all kinds of names for them. But my grandmother called them buttercups. So I call them buttercups. So forgive me <laughs> if it's not right. But oh, every year, these little, but they're, they're some of my most favorite flowers ever. And I love to share it with you every year because they preach. These little, these little beautiful flowers preach every year. Oh, so many sermons. It could, we could just go on and on about all the different sermons they preach. But the, but the one I want to remind you of today is the word that says to you, the long, hard, cold, confining days of question are coming to an end. And God is going to make something beautiful out of these hard places you've been in. If you'll just stay planted and hold on, even through these days of change and transition, you hold your ground and watch God some, bring something beautiful out of your life. Help's on the way. I hear the Lord telling me to tell somebody that again. Help is on the way. No, you've still got to believe that. It will come to pass because this little buttercup also preaches something else to us. And that's the faithfulness of God. Just the, just the rhythms of nature itself. The fact that I'm 62 years old now and, and, you know, I don't ever remember a year of my life that these little beautiful buttercups decided not to bloom. No, because they're on the timetable of God. So every year about mid-January, late January, somewhere in there, these little buttercups are going to be coming up out of the ground. And you've probably got a different flower. Maybe some of you where you live, it's, it's not these, it's something else. That every year you'll see them. They, they come up all the time to remind us God is faithful. God is faithful. You know, I've never seen a year where they just decided, oh, I just decided not to bloom this year. The other day, I was sitting in my house. It was early in the morning. I love to get up early in the morning. I'm just a, definitely a morning person. I like 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. It's good for me. And I was sitting there, and I was just on the couch. I just love being with the Lord in that time. And I was looking out the window, and I knew what time it was because of the sun. In fact, I was looking. Now, I'm in Alabama. So for Alabama, the, right now, in this particular time of the year, the sun's going to rise every morning. You know, it's going to be up by right before 7 o'clock a.m. And you can just, you can set your clock on it. And it was so funny because this week I was sitting on the couch with the Lord. And I looked outside. There was the sun. And I just said out loud, well, God, you're always on time, aren't you? Always on time. I mean, all that he's created. You can even, I looked at my weather app the other day. You can, you can set that, you can look at your weather app and it can tell you as it has for thousands of years, exactly to the minute when that sun is going to rise and when that sun is going to set. Why? Because God set the clock. And when he sets things, honey, you can count on it. I love that. I've never yet had a day to come when it got about, the sun didn't rise, didn't rise till about 10 o'clock in the morning. And then the sun got up about 10 o'clock and said, oh, I just started to sleep in today and just, just didn't really feel like getting up. No, no, I've never seen that. Why? Because that sun is under his command. That's why the old prophet wrote it. I love it. I love it. I love it. When he wrote it and he said, oh, this one thing I recall to my mind, therefore I have hope. <laughs> It is of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. 
Great is your faithfulness. Come on. You can look at it every day. It's not just these buttercups that preach every day. It's all of creation that preaches every day. All of creation. In fact, last night I was having dinner with Kevin and Pam Barnett, my dear friends, who live right next to me, by the way. So we were having dinner. At, they, she fixed dinner for me last night. We we're looking at Romans, the first chapter, the whole first chapter, which is an alarming chapter. But anyway, I was this one part of Romans 1 is so powerful. I just, it comes to my mind right now. I'm going to turn to it. Listen to this. Speaking of all creation preaching, hang on with me because I'm going to get to prayer in just a second. But speaking of all creation preaching, this is why I can't hardly stand to, to uh, stay in the house. I have to go outside all the time because of, of, of things like this, just looking at creation. Listen to this first. I'm reading out of Romans, the first chapter, and starting with, if the wind will let me here, starting with the 18th verse, it says this. But God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. Now watch. Verse 19. They know the truth about God because he made it obvious to them. That's huge. Because he made it. Uh, people know the truth about God, even though they act like they don't. They do. The Bible says right there, because God made it obvious to them. Read on. Verse 20. For ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and sky. Through everything God made, they can clearly see, watch, his invisible, his invisible qualities, his eternal power, and his divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Every bit of that was straight out of the Bible that I just read. Did you get that? The Bible says here that people act like they don't know God, but God, God is just angry with people that act like that, that they just suppress the truth about God. Like they don't know him. The Bible says God's made it obvious to people who he is. It says for ever since the world was created. And ever since humanity has first begun. You can, people can just walk outside. And all they've got to do. Even, even the wicked. Even the people who act like they don't know God. No, they can just walk outside. And the Bible said it right there. They can look at the earth and the earth is shouting, there's a God, there's a God. They can look up to the sky and all of the sky is shouting every single day. There's a God, there is a God. You can look at the trees. You can look at all creation. You can look at that little buttercup and that little buttercup is preaching every single day. All of creation is preaching. There's a God, there's a God. Every morning that sun comes up at exactly the right time. That sun is shouting, there's a God. There's a God. That's what the Bible says. All of creation itself is speaking, watch, of the invisible qualities of his divine nature, of who God is. And then that last part says there, so therefore, people have no excuse for not knowing God. Whoa. So you can't say, well, what if people just don't know? See, I love the part that says, no, no, God made it obvious to them. Why? Because he loves us so much that he wanted us to be able to know who he was. He's the one who made this whole creation be able to speak for itself of who he is, proclaiming his nature and his, and, and, and his heart and his love. Yeah. He's the one. He made it easy for us to know him and come to him. It was hard for him, easy for us. Hard for him because it cost him everything. Easy for us because he says it like this in, in Hebrews 11 and 6. Now, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God, that's prayer, must believe that he is. Yes, and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Oh, you and I have been talking about prayer. This leads us right into it, and I love it. And the thing is about prayer, and even verses like this, he that comes to God must believe that he is. He that comes to God, that's coming to God in prayer. Here's, we've been talking about how to pray, how to pray. I'm going to talk to you about how to pray. It's another element of it. Because you got to remember, like I told you the other day, there are no formulas to prayer. Prayer is not a formula of ABC and one, two, three. This is how you do it. No. that Because God's not our Santa Claus or our sugar daddy. He's God. And you gotta, you got to remember that. 
He's not, he is not going to be bound to anybody's formula. No. He cannot be confined. This is what I heard this morning. He cannot be confined by man's formulas or boxes. No, he cannot. Just to make sure that we understand that, I told you the other day, that's why he, even when he was on earth doing his miracles, he changed the way he did them all the time. He spoke to this person to heal him. He spoke to that one. He spat on that one. He wrote in the dirt for that one. He turned their tables over and he turned their lives over. He was unpredictable and he was uncontrollable. That's our Jesus. But the key to him is this. <laughs> no, he's not bound to any formula. But this is the way that Jesus said he did it. I only do those things I see my father doing. And I only say the things that I hear my father saying. So you see, honey, he did not leave us with a formula. Because had he left us with a formula of how to pray and receive from God, then we would make prayer about a formula to pray with instead of a relationship with him. That we love him so much and that we trust him so much in the places of our need that even when we don't get what we're asking for the way we thought we would get it, the time we thought we would get it, we trust him so much that we can look at him and say, God, I love you. I trust you to the point I can say like Jesus did, God, not my will, your will be done. That. It's what God wanted. He didn't want just a bunch of robots that that came to him like some kind of a computer formula. Press this in, out spits that, and you get your answer. No. He wanted a relationship with you. He wanted a people that he put on this planet that knew him, could see him, hear him, and love him. Like I sang to you months ago. And he walks with me and he talks with me he tells me i am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known this morning i was thinking about that old song because i love it so much because that's how we are with god the miracle of walking with him but it was like i heard the lord singing that as he remembered jesus and I want him to be singing this about you and me. When the father looked at Jesus, the thing that he loved, the father could have said and sang, oh, and he walks with me. This is God singing. And he talks with me. He tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Oh, I want to be that kind of friend of God. Don't you? I want to be the kind of friend to God that he would sing that about me. She walks with me and she talks with me. She tells me I am her own. I want to live my life that way. So that prayer is not just about getting what I want. It's about seeking who he is. Loving him and receiving from him in relationship with God. And then here's the deal. Whenever we, walk, whenever we walk with God like that, the Bible says, oh, if you evil are evil and you know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more would your father give good gifts to those who ask him? He's a father that wants to bless you. That's why he says, come to me, come to me, come in faith. It's the only way you can come. And when you come to me, you've got to, here's the how to pray. Believe that he is. Believe that he is what? Believe that he is God. I believe that he is God. I believe that I believe that he is God and that he is a reward. Those the diligent seek him. We'll, we'll talk about that part another day. I believe he that comes to God must first believe. Now I know that sounds simple, but that's that's the huge criteria of how to pray. Don't just sit there. Jesus said it in Matthew when he was preaching on the Sermon on the Mount. Don't just babble and just say the same old thing all the time, all the time, and you don't even half mean it. You're thinking about what you're going to eat when you get through praying. Don't pray like that. He says, pray and believe. You can't believe something if you're just sitting there halfway. No, it's all the way in. You got to, he that comes to God must believe. Believe what? Believe that he is. Believe that if I need healing, he's my healer. Believe that if I need deliverance, he's my deliverer. Believe that if I need provision, he's Jehovah Jireh, my provider. 
provider. Believe that if I need help, he is my helper. Come on. I believe he that comes to God must believe, believe, believe that he is, that he is God. He said to Moses, you tell them my name is I am. You believe that he is. He is I am. That's who he is. I am everything you need. It's what he is. It's who he is. I'm, I am. He's what you need. I love that. Today, God is wanting to encourage you in believing. How do you apply that to prayer? How to pray? Of course, you and I have talked about this many times, and I'm not going to elaborate on this, but I am going to elaborate on this part that I heard for you today. How do I believe? I told you already. I asked the Lord that years ago. How do I believe? And he said, you know, what you meditate on is what you believe. So it's you when you have a need in your life, as many of you do right now, and I do, you take that word, the word of God, and you start meditating, not on the problem, but on the word about the problem. Not on what you're seeing, but on what God said about it. And that's what you start believing. I'm going to meditate what I meditate on is what I believe. I've told you this a lot because it's true. If I meditate on the problem, I'm going to believe that problem is impossible. If I meditate on the word, I'm going to believe nothing is impossible. And then what you do now. Now, he that comes to God must believe. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. So I'm going to get faith by receiving a word. That's what gives me faith is I get a word from God. I meditate on that word. That turns that word into, that turns that thing into faith, okay? Now then, here's, this is huge. I'm going to take that word, and I'm going to make that word like my arrow. Now, here's what I heard for you. I'm going to make my need. Okay, here's my need. I went and got me a bullseye. It's kind of wanting to roll up on me. Let me find me a place on this old wall here, Okay. Here's a nail. Let me see if I can reach it. It's way up high. Hang on. Okay, I'm going to hang that bullseye right up here. Now, come on now. Work with me. Come on. There we go. There we go. There's your need right there. Oh, that little red dot. Now, you can write right there in that little red dot, write my, your son's name. Write your daughter's name. Write my healing. Write finances. Whatever that is. And, and here's the deal. Whatever you're believing God for, he that comes to God must believe. Okay, believe what? I told you. Believe what God said about that. What God said about it. I wish that wind wouldn't knock my... Oh, fiddle dee. Hang on. Stay with me. Stay with me. Must believe. Can you see that? Okay, now. I've oh, got it. Got it. Got it. Right there. Whoa. Now, here's my word. I'm going to take this arrow. I know it's hot pink, but it's all I could get today. It's my granddaughter's. So... You're going to get your word. This word is going to become your arrow. This, this arrow is going to become your word. This is your promise. Now, this is how you pray. When you pray about something, don't just pray in passive, broad strokes. Pray with passionate, targeted faith. In other words, don't just pray, God bless my children. I mean, there's a place for that. And yes, it's not like in vain. And that's fine and sweet and pretty. But if you need a miracle for your son, get targeted, get specific, get passionate in your heart, get focused. You make that word, you pray till God gives you a word about that son. If I'm talking about a son that's addicted right now, you got a son that's addicted to some uh, uh, medication or, or to, to drugs, or you got a daughter that's bound in sexual perversion, or you've got a financial need, or whatever it is, whatever it is, okay? You've got, now you pray till you say, God, what are you saying about it? Now you take that word that God said, that's your arrow. Now when you go to pray, don't just go broad, oh God, bless me, Lord, just if thou wilt just held my body and that's nice and pretty but honey if you're wanting something done you're gonna have to get a little more aggressive than that you get targeted and you get your faith targeted right here's your word and you got your target right there come on that's your son bullseye right there i'm getting specific i want my son delivered from addiction i want my daughter delivered from rebellion i want my marriage to be restored i want my body to be healed come on and you get very 
very specific. And then not only that, you get that word that God said and you send that word every day. Every day that, that you're declaring that word out of your mouth, it's like an arrow shooting out of your mouth straight into that thing right in the bullseye. Years ago, I used to travel with Marilyn, Marilyn Hickey. Oh, she's one of my favorite human beings on the earth. How I love that lady. I used to sing in her crusades for her when I was in my 20s. So she's a spiritual mother in my life. And I never forgot something Marilyn Hickey said. By the way, she still teaches, and you should hear her teaching. You should go look her up, Marilyn Hickey. Now, Marilyn said years ago that her mother had a brain tumor. And Marilyn said this, oh, Marilyn said, I took the word of God like an arrow. And Marilyn said, I would visualize the word coming out of my mouth like an arrow out of my mouth. And she said, I would visualize what that brain tumor looked like in my mother's brain. And I would see that brain tumor, but I would send the word out of my mouth like an arrow. And I would shoot that word. I would shoot that arrow of the word of God right into that brain tumor of my mother. And she said she did it over and over and over and over. And honey, I can tell you right now, Marilyn Hickey struck the mark because that brain tumor was dissolved and healed supernaturally for her mother. Why? Because the word is that powerful. You've got to get specific. How do you pray? Here's my answer for you today. How do you pray? He that comes to God must believe. You've got to come to God in faith. For he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Praying pretty prayers is all sweet and pretty and everything. But honey, don't, don't just pray little all collected, nice, little quiet. No, there's a place for that. But sometimes even when I'm in corporate prayer, I just see people just praying all these broad strokes of prayer. And I'm just like, no, we need to get focused. We need to pray about that specific thing. And we need to pray about it. And you visualize it. And you see the word going into it. And you see the word changing it. And you hit the bullseye. You see that thing every time you pray. You look at that thing you're praying for. You look at it straight in the face. Put their face right there. Put your husband face right there. Put your child's face right there. You put it right there and then you send the word straight into it every single time you pray. You get targeted. You get specific. You get passionate and you believe that the word of God is stronger than the circumstance. How do you pray? He that comes to God mm, must believe that he is. That he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. I want to encourage you with that today. Two weeks ago, we spoke on the prayer of Jabez. That's one way to pray. Jabez prayed specific prayer. Last week, we prayed the Lord's Prayer because that's how he answered the disciples on how to pray. Those are specific targets of how to pray. But you can't accomplish any of it without this element, which is faith. That's what he says, Hebrews eleven six. 6. Without faith, it is impossible to even please God. For he that comes to God must believe. And there's no excuse for not believing. Because he's everywhere around us. From the universe that is beyond our comprehension to the buttercup in the ground, the faithfulness of God is evident every day. How could we not believe? Stir your faith today. Get passionate in prayer. Don't be passive. Specific. Meditate on the word until it overcomes your problem. Lord, I pray for my sweet friend. Lord, I just pray that today she will be encouraged by this word. I pray she will know how much of a difference her prayers are making. I pray she will know today how much she matters and how much he matters to God. Let them know, God, they're going to see the miracle. Encourage them today, Father, with little signs coming up from the ground, with little signs coming up from the hard, stony, hard, cold places, that indeed you're going to make something beautiful someday out of this place in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, sweet, sweet friend, let me hear from you. Can you do that, please? I want to thank you for praying for my back last week. You know, today's the best day I've had. 
I've been able to move all over the place with no, hardly any pain at all. Your prayers were so effective. Thank you for your prayers and your sweet advice to me. And it matters. I loved reading your comments. I read so, so, so many of your comments last week and my heart melted. I love you. I'm so thankful you and I have each other to encourage each other in the Lord and our faithful God. So until next week, just hold your post. Mm -mm -mm. Go buy you some Targets. I got this one at Walmart. Go get you some Targets. Hang them up in your house. Put their picture right there. Get you an arrow. Point it every day in prayer. In Jesus' name. I'm going to close with this. I bought this from my granddaughter. This is what you look like in prayer. Look here. Here's what you look like when you pray. I thought of you when I saw this. There, there you are. That's you praying right there. Can you see it? Let me get where you can see it. Can you see her? Right there. Right there. <laughs> That's you in prayer. Honey, you are, you are ready to go. In Jesus' name. I'll see you next week, honey. To them. Bye-bye.